I'm five, I'm five, and I'm Meg, and we live in Tokyo, and I'm part of the Tokyo. So, Tokyo is an area between Bangkok and Brisbane, and the turn off to our street is 10 kilometers from the roundabout at Lucknow, and we are around, say, even less than 100 meters into the fire zone from, yeah. There's no footpath, schools, or shops. We have kids from 13 different schools that live in the area. There's an able transport, but no sports, unless you count croquet. Um, <laughs> we've, lived here, we've lived there most of our lives and can't imagine living anywhere else. The fire came through on the night of December 30th. We knew it was coming, but Mum said it would be fine, leaving uninsured boats and no bikes in the shed. Nobody from the CFA or Delta had spoken to us, and because we were in open paddocks that had only just been cut and bailed with minimal trees, we thought we would be okay, but we thought wrong. We had gone to sail with the dog and cat, and all the neighbours had taken the cattle and horses away as a precaution. Mum had said it was probably just a grass fire and that we'd be fine. She had no, help. She had no idea how bad it could be. That night was a long one. The app was going crazy. It was mostly about stuff here, but we were the lucky ones. With so many people we know and have now met, they were not as fortunate. This, this is what we came home to on New Year's Eve at about 8 in the morning. This video is from one of our friends who checked up on our place for us. This takes a <laughs> lot. It was taken by one of our friends who came to check up on our place. It also gave us an opportunity to brace ourselves and decide whether it was okay for us to return at that day. When we came into the house now that our shed was gone, everything in it was gone, but unlike so many others, we still have had our house. What you probably can't see in this video is, as you look down at the Nicholson River, is the trees that were dropping and that continued to drop for weeks like afterwards. As we were walking in, we noticed two buckets of water around the house weren't touched, even though the fire came right up to them. Mum's washing was still on the line. We had to throw those clothes out to not but being able to get rid of this fantastic smell. The apple tree was still standing, but all the apples were scorched on one side. There was smoke all over the brickwork, but the moss was still alive. The boards of the house were scorched, but the house was still there. Even though it smelled or old cigarettes and burnt popcorn. Our power supply was destroyed even after we were fixed here in a few days. It took weeks it took weeks it took weeks to get the power back. This is a view from our veranda. This is a view from our veranda. Every time we visited we were amazed at the regrowth. We couldn't believe how small a time it took for nature to replenish itself. Eventually the air the air cleared, green shoots formed, the power came back on, the, the clean, and the cleaners came, and we could move back home. But still weeks before that, Starfield had kicked into gear and started its journey along the road of support and recovery. Care packages were delivered to homes and the hall was opened to become its own mini relief centre. People were going door to door, handing out donated buckets, shovels, rakes, and more. Southfield had come alive. The Southfield Hall started as a daily relief centre. Then after a while, it turned into Friday night tea, where hundreds of people would get together for dinner and a chat. 
A team of volunteers would like to support the community with groups across the, across the state volunteering their time and, and free to come cook for the community. The food was awesome with something different each week. All home cooked and prepared fresh by volunteers. The little kids were happy, but honestly, there wasn't that much for the older kids to do. Then came snacks. We signed up on the first day and the last Friday night dinner. We had a bit of a lesson on how to take photos and frame them. Then COVID arrived. So we started taking photos, sharing, uploading, and looking at what others were doing. We were stuck at home or stuck with our families anyway. So we all made the most of it. We went to walk, we went to drive, we went exploring and cutting new firewood, and the cameras travelled with us. Using the same to our advantage or as motivation, we were looking to a bush where the fires were travelled through. We could see the silver lining that the fire plant destroyed everything. There were still untouched areas hidden amongst what we had lost. Sand and other green areas were seen. The cases went up, but it was still COVID. There were still masks, and we weren't allowed to gather in groups. So we sent a video to each of the kids as their cases went up. The few kids that were there took over, the, took over from the adults and seemed to be involved with their own work, seeing the pictures up ourselves. Um, these are some of the photos from the first round of the hub. Great photos don't have to be complicated. And in case you missed it, here's one of the community favorites of this egg. Along the path to today, today has definitely been a busy one. The fastest snap program spread rapidly, more kids got involved and new posters were printed to the hub. Kids got the opportunity to talk on the radio and on the three pounds podcast my by Matt Ebert, like which hasn't been which hasn't been posted yet. And we did a twenty four month calendar which is for $10 each. We had some here today over there. Um, um, from this point, we are hoping to make some books for the kids using the photos and expeditions going out to festivals and cities. Um, so, what do we think of SNAP in regards to nature recovery? It has given people the opportunity to capture in time the journey of, natural di of the natural disaster and its recovery to and of the people and the land. It also helps people find the silver lining of what was still what still remained instead of looking at what has been taken away and what has grown from the remains. The photos we took we used to capture what was happening around us, but it gave us a different perspective and it let us show the younger perspectives that we here with us, with ages three to sixteen taking the photos. It leaves us with something we can keep, something that can't be taken away in another fire. It tells us that we always rise back up after we fall or break. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, girls. Extremely brave, well practiced, delivered beautifully. Well done. And I think if if our environment and world is in hands like you girls into the future, we're in pretty good hands.